Recent Department of Energy data shows that natural gas stockpiles may surpass records this fall. So does this now mean the end of the steepest rally in natural gas prices that we've seen in three years? Nicholas Brooks is the head of research and investment strategy of ETF Securities. Their natural gas ETF is seeing the biggest trading volume among all energy exchange traded funds in the world. He joins me now uh, from London. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, a massive amount uh, of natural gas supply we're hearing about today. On the same day that we're hearing about new shares coming to market uh, for this ETF. Tell me about the timing there. Well, I think, um, I mean, to some degree, they're, you know, they're both very separate. Um, uh, this year, natural gas has been a very poor performer uh, up until the beginning of this month when, as you, as you mentioned, we've seen a very strong rally in natural gas prices. But overall, natural gas has been one of the worst performing commodities so far this year. So the rally that we've seen over the past few weeks actually um, has done very little to dent um, its overall underperformance for the full year. Um, in terms of the, uh, the new shares that, uh, that are being talked about by, I think that's USG that you're mentioning, um, uh, again, I think that that is not directly related to what's going on with the price performance, but uh, to some degree with what's going on from a structural perspective with their fund. Um, but overall, I suspect that as these new shares are issued, you'll start to see some of the premium that's been in place, very substantial premium that's been in place on that ETF uh, start to come down. Uh, the U.S. National Gas Fund, to be clear is the ETF that I was referencing there. So are you saying um, when you're talking about natural gas prices, the price of the underlying commodity, that it is divorced from the ETF price right now? Well, again, uh, you know, we have a natural gas ETF uh, listed here in Europe, uh, ETFS Natural Gas. Um, and we've seen uh, over a billion dollars of flows into that this year. Now, we haven't seen any discrepancy whatsoever between our NAV or the underlying price and the performance of the share. So, in other words, the share is performing exactly the way the underlying future return would ex you would expect uh, to see. Um, what was happening in the U.S. with the USG was a very separate issue, which had to do with technical uh, details um, of the listing in the U.S. But, in fact, our natural gas um, ETC listed here in Europe has actually been trading exactly in line with the natural gas future. How concerned are you about the commodities futures trading group putting in new regulations? The CFTC has made a lot of noise about their fear that there's a lot of speculation in this market and the need to cap uh, some practices here. Absolutely. I mean, it's something we're watching very carefully. Um, obviously, it completely depends on what types of policies are put through. And right now, it's just pure speculation on what they're going to do. Um, in the end, it, the devil is in the detail, um, whether they're very broad overview types of uh, 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 caps put on or if they become very detailed. Um, it also has to do with the implementation. Um, we have a very different structure in terms of our ETFs and the ones than the oil and the gas in the U.S. Uh, so to some degree, I think we're less affected by those types of regulations. Regulations. Um, for example, as I mentioned, so far our ETFs have been trading uh, directly in line with the underlying futures return, and we've seen no aberration. So, again, so far um, what's been talked about has been having no impact whatsoever on our, our funds. Do you believe that limiting the number of contracts that energy traders can hold will reduce the speculation? Well, I think number one is, you know, first, is there really speculation? I think that, you know, is still very much open for debate. Um, uh, the CFTC's phrase, of course, is that speculation is fine. They're worried about what they call excessive speculation. Um, but again, just looking at uh, what's been going on with our own uh, exchange-traded funds here in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, for example, I mentioned we've seen about a billion dollars go into our natural gas ETF, and during that period, in fact, natural gas prices continue to fall. So that would indicate to me that the flows that have been going into our funds uh, certainly haven't been driving the price. Um, so, uh, you know, overall, I think it's very much open for debate whether, uh, in fact, speculation um, is actually driving uh, commodities prices. Okay. So uh, when we saw UNG, which we've been talking about and you've been referencing, uh, suspend new share sales, something that they reversed today with this issuance, the first since July, how has that benefited your firm and what does today's move uh, mean? Well, again, from you know, our firm point of view, it's always hard to know. I mean, we had been seeing very strong inflows into our natural gas uh, ETCs here in Europe um, since 
uh, earlier this year, well before uh, UNG had any issues. Those flows have been very strong recently, but it's always hard to tell how much of that has to do with the problems that uh, UNG has been having and how much has to do with um, investors uh, wanting to play the uh, natural gas market. But uh, certainly we have seen a very nice uh, sharp rise in natural gas prices recently, um, and it really, you know, we'll, we'll have to see whether that continues. All right. Um, well, Nicholas Brooks, head of research and investment strategy at ETF Securities. Uh, thanks so much for giving us some perspective on what's happening uh, in natural gas.